We are getting ready to get started here, but welcome to Youth Service. We're so excited to have you join us tonight. We're still sad to be online, but grateful for the technology that we can get together and enjoy uh, God's Word and some laughs and each other and all of that. So you're going to see Pastor Rob and I here yep. tonight. I'm sharing the stream right now uh, awesome. on my public uh, profile so go ahead and do that and check in in the comments uh, just yeah. type what you're here and let us know what's up yeah we I wanted to encourage you to do that so you'll see us kind of passing the phone back and forth and connecting with you as one of us is talking the other one will uh, answer any questions or give you a shout out on Facebook we want this to be really interactive and that's why we're on Facebook tonight instead of YouTube because it just seems like it was harder for y'all to interact on uh, YouTube, so we wanted to be able to have this be live and real. Anybody so it says there? we got like four viewers, so oh, go ahead and say awesome. hi, everybody. Very cool, very cool. Hi, everybody. Oh, and I see Seven one comment. We do. Yep. Amethyst, Sunny oh, is good. watching. Very cool. Uh, hi, Sunny. Sunny says hello. Hey, hello we're glad you're here. Yeah. Very awesome. cool, very cool. All right, well, um, so yeah, go ahead and give us a shout out, a check in, share it on your page. Maybe you've got some friends that want to know where, what it's like to go to your youth group. That's a good way to do that too. You can share it on Instagram as well. Um, yeah, so I think you're up next with some announcements. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's start it off with prayer. That's so, a great idea. Yeah. Lord, thank you so much for, again, we've said it a lot in this season for the technology that enables us to share uh, the preaching of your word and just getting together as a youth group even though it's online and virtual we wish we could do it physical um, so i just uh, thank you for all that but um, we do pray for those that are sick that you would bring healing we pray yes, for Lord. protection for those that are not sick um, yes, uh, just bring strength and healing to those that are even recovering lord as we know that joe and his family is recovering mm -hmm. so just mm -hmm. continue to bless their family with your presence mm -hmm. and your healing and your mm -hmm. strength lord and uh, just be with us the rest of our time together. May we just have a good, memorable night. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. We have another viewer that has just joined us. Our Persian cat, Atticus, has entered the room. Does anybody want to see him? Is anyone a big cat fan? Or is it just me and it's weird? It's probably weird. Yeah, we can move on. Maybe okay. in a little bit. We can <laughs> maybe show him off. Say it in the comments if you want to see him. Because he's literally right at our feet. And he's just had a combing and he looks very beautiful at the moment. So <laughs> I'm a big Atticus fan. He got some fun comments. Awesome. Okay, yeah. announcements. Yeah, so really not a lot going on this week for now. Um, yeah, again, it's just kind of laying low, but I'll get out of the way for this. So the, oh. the Five Nights at Foundry, next Wednesday is our last Wednesday for the water nights. So you'll want to be here at the church, outside the church. Um, it's going to be a game called Steal the Bacon, Bacon, right? And I'm not exactly sure how it goes, but if it's going like it has before, <laughs> it's going to be cray-cray, and you'll just have a lot of fun. Anyway. And arrive home very, very wet. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. It's so wet when we got home. Just so drenched from our water games, which is really the only way to meet outside in August in Texas. Have you guys been enjoying these water games? I would love to see your response if you thought they were fun. Yeah, give not. us a thumbs up or a heart yeah. or, or something if you like those yeah. water games. Yeah, we've had fun with them. Um, I hurt for several days after last week's kickball, uh, sliding into first. Yeah, he's, in the, he's in the shot. <laughs> I just well. saw him in the morning <laughs> shot. Yeah. That's our fluffy well, package. Might as well give him some screen time. Hi, there he is, fluffy boy. So fluffy. Isn't he adorable? He's the crying kitty on Instagram. If you're looking for a new uh, cat to follow on Instagram, he does have his own. Uh, yep, he likes cat. to sleep and, and find a new There you go. Yep. Up. Yes. We do have one more announcement. It's kind of a teaser, so just check the video and enjoy.
declare war and the wolf will rise. You couldn't quite see it on the screen, but uh, that's in reference to what, we're, we, what we will be doing next in youth group. Yeah, uh, that is definitely a teaser trailer because you really don't have any idea what's coming next. Um, it kind of felt like watching an Oren video from Parks and Rec. Thing, but, but, but good stuff. It's going to be great. Uh, we're really looking forward to September because we are working on some cool ideas. Because you know us, we're always working on trying to figure out what to do next to grab your guys' attention and keep you engaged. So I hope you're here this evening hanging out with us. Next, we're going to talk about um, our gecko story. Oh, yes, yes. So I have been like haunted by geckos this week. Uh, the other night I was climbing into bed and I found like this thing in my bed and it was a little baby gecko and I pulled it out and you have to know that I'm super blind and so I can't um, I can't sure see without my glasses. Yes, go ahead and throw it up on the screen. Yeah, scroll down. Yeah. Anyway, super blind without my glasses. I pull it out and it looks like a frog to me and I scream and throw it across the room. And then Rob and Sarah come in and they're like, what? What's going on? And they're like, there's, there's a, a frog, a frog in my bed. And Rob's like, slow down. What's going on? I'm like, no, it's a frog in my bed. He's like, I'm sure there wasn't a frog in your bed. I'm like, I'm sure there was a frog in my bed. So finally he finds the remains of the gecko thrown against the wall. And then like, so I search the cupboards, I mean, for more geckos, of course. And I find its tail in the bed. So you can see in the picture, it is tailless because it was still in the bed with me. So, okay, gecko, whatever, no big deal, right? I'm not scared of them, they don't bite, whatever, just super creepy, especially after I had just talked about the plagues with the Israelites at young adults, like, that night, and we were talking about which is the worst one, and I was like, oh, for sure, the worst one would be having frogs in your bed, and that's exactly what happened that night. And then the next day, we went to use the church van, and guess what I found in the back of the church van? Gecko number two! And this one has like tails for days, right? Look at that, it's, it's insane. And so, but this one was a mummified gecko. And when I threw it out of the van, it actually made like a <laughs> crackery sound when it hit the ground because it was that dead. So the question that I want some interaction from y'all on is which would you prefer? A gecko alive in your bed or a dead mummified gecko ge 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 in your van. I'm trying to say van and gecko at the same time. Which would you prefer? Dead gecko in the van or, mum or live gecko in the bed? Go ahead and check in. Pastor Rob is gonna keep us informed on that poll because that's something that we need to know. With that being said, as you check in, <laughs> we're just doing this on the fly here. Which would uh, you prefer? So go ahead and check in. And then now it's time for random videos. These are videos submitted by students and leaders. So leaders, you're not counted out either. Random videos that make us laugh. Uh, there are two this week. Uh, our first one is submitted, I think. Uh... It'll say. Okay. But uh, we got an update on the poll. Oh, OK. Uh, Sarah said neither. neither. That's not a, a vote. Face. <laughs> yeah. face. <laughs> and Sunny says live. Uh, live gecko, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah then you can keep it as a pet. Significantly more rubbery if it survives the throw across the room. Yep. Kirsten <laughs> said either would really bother me. <laughs> I'm with Kirsten. Yes, yes they yes. both bothered me quite a bit. So, yeah. okay. thanks for checking in. So, here's okay. some random videos. <laughs> enjoyed the one where they're taking a selfie and the guitar player. One of my friends said the guitar playing bird was Pastor Rob. So that's my random video. That one is just goofy, but this one is entirely more biblical. So uh, go ahead and pay attention. <laughs> that one even fits in with our uh, Israelites and Egypt theme. So great job on the random videos. 
again, we'd love some feedback. Which one did you like better? Uh, Old Testament or Birds with Arms? <laughs> Just kind of random. Yeah, both entirely random. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we still have four people, and I think everybody's kind of chimed in. So. Oh, very cool. Well, we're all glad that you're there, guys. Thank you yep. for showing up tonight and encountering Jesus. Now, if you are watching this at midnight tonight or at some other time when this isn't live, we're still glad you're watching, and yep. Pastor Anna's got a great message for all of us, and so we can still stay together and stay connected as a group because that's what is keeping us all uh, tied together, okay? Yeah. So just uh, stay connected uh, with our group here, and yeah. Yeah, well, at this point, we are going to start talking about Speed the Light, which you know is super near and dear to our hearts. So Rob's going to give yep. us some more information on that. Yes, so Speed the Light is a collection, well, it's an organization, it's an effort, really, for all the youth groups in the South Texas district, actually across our country, where youth groups and teenagers just like you and our daughter. <laughs> um, Don't wait this way. She's literally eating popcorn watching this show right now, which is awesome. <laughs> you know when you see the guy with the popcorn eating in the comments? She is that right oh, now. She's that okay. mean. I love it. It's fantastic. Anyway, so, um, yes, i got to get my graphic. Oh. So Speed the Light is an effort for teenagers and youth groups to raise money for missionaries and not just for the general purpose of going to the mission field but we provide essential transportation and communication mm -hmm. and um what's the next thing that they're saying uh well i think that's compassion a yeah compassion so like um well water is now one of them but yeah. transportation would be like uh, vehicles to go uh, off deep into the woods in the jungle. Uh, sound systems is the communication part, video screens and projectors, mm -hmm. so that they can do whatever they can to spread the, the message of Jesus in a, in a more uh, pronounced way. Mm -hmm. um, it amplifies their own voice right. to be able to do that. And so we have um, lots of missionary friends because Pastor Anna and I have been around for a little while <laughs> and, um, and we're utilizing Zoom and everything. So we actually, uh, Pastor Anna was able to have a conversation with some of our friends uh, who uh, actually were Sarah's children's pastor That's when right. we were in San Antonio. And so they were in children's ministry a long time and went off uh, on the other side of the world and we'll let them talk about what they're doing and what that means to them. Hey, I've got Aaron and Shannon Morgan here, longtime family friends and missionaries to a very cool place. Do you guys want to tell us what, you, what it is you do, where you serve? Yeah, sure thing. Um, we are in Hungary, which um, we live outside of Budapest in the suburb of Pontiosh, which is like, means walnut y in yeah. translating into English. Um, so Hungary is like. Oh, yeah. Sort of Eastern Europe, sort of Central Europe. Yeah. I would, if you don't know where Hungary is, it's just east of Austria. So you've got Germany, Austria, and then Hungary. Right. Okay. And I know that this has been really, really challenging in the pandemic across the world, but I've really had a special concern for our missionaries. What has been challenging about the pandemic for you guys? Well, they, they clamped down, which they needed to. You know, they, they had a bunch of rules in place for, you know, let's shut down all church meetings and all this kind of stuff. And so when we were there, that was probably our biggest challenge is we were starting something called Round the Table, which is an outreach that we're doing saying, hey, come over for a, a night of playing games or doing crafts or doing artwork or whatever, and then stay for an optional Bible study. Well, we were beta testing that. And like, I don't know, two months in, yeah. like, that got canceled. But yeah. then now we're back in the States. It really so doesn't cooperate. No, yeah. challenge. It doesn't cooperate well with social distancing. No, <laughs> yeah. no. So, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, we're on a table sharing your yeah. 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 That's going to be Yeah. Uh, well, on the other hand, what has been a, um, a victory or a win or, or a blessing that's come out of this? Well, I'll go back before this all happened. All right. we did, uh, like all four levels of language, and uh, we found a speed of light car, uh, which was amazing. We have this donated car here in the States. Oh, go speed of light. We yeah. heard you have awesome guys. Yeah. 
thought you were doing a speed of light. So way to go, you guys. Yeah, it's, it's a real blessing. Like here, we're gonna, you know, we need prayer for the donated car we got and another used car we got to, to last and work good. But but with speed the light car, it's like a new car, it's under warranty, and you know it's going great. It's waiting for us when we get back. Um, and we've actually already had a couple services this summer, which we didn't really expect. Yeah. yeah. Know what it's going to be like this this year. We're going to be here this whole school year. Yeah. Language was just a really big thing because. You know, we were told by the leadership that, you know, hey, guys, just get ready for, like, eight years of study in Hungarian before you really get it. And so, um, we're like second graders now. Yeah, maybe, maybe. but we're proud of that, considering we went in with no Hungarian knowledge at all. Yeah. And we continued some really intense study while we were there. And yeah. so, it's good. Yeah. That was a good one. So, that leads me to our last question. How can we pray for you guys? You know, biggest thing right now for for me personally, because I'm the one doing making the calls to all the pastors and stuff, is uh, we need to book some services and we need to get in and, and share with people what's going on in Hungary. We still have some support to raise before we can go back over. Um, I'm not worried about that, uh, and we could probably end up raising the support with it without ever visiting a church. But there's just something about being able to come and share what God's doing, and then people can be kind of a part of it. Maybe God will touch on their heart. So yeah, and I would say also, um, as far as praying for Hungary goes, Hungary is like a lot of European countries in that you have a lot of people who are really just kind of don't care and have really just shut themselves off from God. Yeah. So, um, but we really feel like Europe in general is on the cusp of something amazing happening. Uh -huh. So. Pray that the hearts of the Hungarians would really be open and just searching for the truth and be open to the gospel. Awesome. We can do that. We'll definitely pray for you guys. Thank you so much for your time. It's such a joy to know you and hear what you guys are doing. And we'll be continuing to lift you up and giving to be the light. So be the light card. Have a good day. We love you guys. You guys have great youth pastors. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we appreciate that shout out. Thanks, mm -hmm. Aaron and Shannon, for your time. Uh, just sharing what it's like to be out on the field. They had two teenage boys that mm -hmm. were with them, and, and their oldest uh, graduated high school, so he's going to be staying in the States and stuff. So it's just a whole other level of sacrifice for these right. missionaries. And um, and it's, it's amazing to watch their, their sacrifice and their giving hearts. So it really compels me to want to give more. You know, I'm not called to go to the other side of the world um, or learn another language. I can barely speak the one that I have right now. Um, but but uh, if we're not called to, to go, then we're called to give. And so that's how you can give. And it doesn't matter what the amount that you uh, can give, uh, every little bit helps. Right. It doesn't hurt, obviously. So every bit helps. And so we've enabled this on our uh, website. You can go to seegod.org and you get taken to the main page. There's a red button on the top right. It says give online. And then when you go to that, then there's a drop down, which fund you'd like to give to. And there's one specifically for Speed the Light. And so you can give electronically. You can give it on Sundays in an envelope, mm -hmm. or you can just give Pastor Anna a bunch of money and say, give this to the missionaries, yeah. and, and we'll get it right there. Yep. Um, so there's lots of ways you can give. And so I actually have been super proud of our students because yeah. at the beginning of the year, we set a goal of $1,000. Actually, it really wasn't the beginning of the year. It was the end of February, yeah. right before all this coronavirus stuff came you know, to the surface in such a crazy, insane way. Anyway, we had committed to give $1,000 and starting giving to Speed the Light because that was not something that uh, we were currently doing as a youth group. So that meant we were going to educate and then and come up with ways to give and encouragements and all of that. And literally within three weeks of us making that commitment to the $1,000, uh, everything fell out and we couldn't have services. And, and I just want to say I'm so proud of you guys because we've still given over $600 to 
towards that speed the light goal in a pandemic in this year when we've barely been able to have like a regular service in our space. And so I think that's amazing. And I think our thousand dollar goal is still well within reach. So mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you guys for doing what you've done. And I just encourage you to continue to do that. Um, Hit me up with your money. I'll get it to the right people, the right place, um, or go online and give because it makes a big impact. So, can we pray? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, let's pray over the offering and, and the Morgans. Yes. As we highlighted them. God, we just thank you for the Morgans, and they represent so many missionaries that we know and, and that we don't even know that have put their lives on hold or given up so much so that they can go and answer the call to yes. tell people in other countries about you. Thank you that they have gone, uh, the Morgans have gone and done uh, so well with their language. I pray that you just continue to solidify that even as they're in the States, that they wouldn't lose that. But uh, the contacts that they began to, to make before they had to come back home uh, would, would continue to grow through electronic means, you know, the internet and stuff. We can still build relationships. I pray for their efforts to build their funds while they're stateside. I pray that pastors would answer their phones that they'd return calls, that they would connect with Aaron, mm -hmm. and that they would be able to uh, have a window at a church just to say who they are and where mm -hmm. they're going, mm -hmm. or be able to have a whole service and, and really share the vision of what God is doing in them and through them yes. in Hungary. And I pray for, uh, just again, this this money that Pastor Anna said that we've been able to raise, Lord. We we do pat ourselves on the back and we, we say good job to our teenagers, but but we praise you for it. Mm -hmm. um, we give you the glory for it and know that uh, everything we give when it's blessed by you goes so much further. Mm -hmm. And so we just pray for your blessing on that offering to go in, into the funds would, would be able to buy that essential transportation and communication and uh, help meet those compassionate needs. Yes. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you're a pastor and you're watching and you want to add the Morgans to your church's mm -hmm. giving schedule, you can find them through their friends with Rob and I, uh, Aaron and Shannon Morgan, and they are home right now, willing to itinerate. And I actually talked to them again this week and they said, hey, we can even do Zoom calls like we did with you. So just know do that, live. yeah, you can do it live or pre-record or any of those things. So I just want to encourage you. Well, to I tagged uh, Shannon. I wasn't able to bring up Aaron's uh, tag, so Very cool. in the comments. Yeah. Awesome. You can connect with them there, too, if you have questions about Hungary or what they're doing or the game night that they've been doing. They're just super cool people. So, All right. Well, I guess we better move on into the message now, a uh, portion of our time together. Uh, we've been in this Red Thread series. And remember, the Red Thread is following the promise of Jesus, the promise of salvation, and the promise of restoration with God throughout the Old Testament and connecting it to the Gospels, to the life of Jesus, the person of Jesus. And so we've been in this basically this entire year. Um, last week, we, two weeks ago, we wrapped up the book of Joshua. And this week, um, actually, I want to do a quick shout out there. If you missed last week's micro message, I promise you it's worth your time to jump onto YouTube and look for the, the uh, service whatever the date was a week ago. Uh, it's entitled Toes, Thumbs, and Thoes. And I promise it's probably the grossest Bible study that you have ever heard. So I hope you will go and listen to it because it was a lot of fun. It was just kind of a little extra. But so now we are at uh, the cusp of the book of Judges. We've just kind of stepped into that territory. To set it up, we realized the Israelites have, have come out of Egypt. They got to the edge of the Promised Land in about a year. They rejected the promised land. They turned around and went back into the wilderness for the next 40 years. That generation that had come out of Egypt was labeled the terminal generation, and they died in the wilderness. This new generation is the one that would actually step into the promised land. Moses, at the edge the second time, transfers the mantle of leadership over to Joshua. Joshua has been with them for a very long time. He is one of the original spies going into Israel. And so Joshua actually leads them into this new nation, even though he's like 80-something. And he fights like a young man, and he helps them take over uh, basically um, the prominent places of Canaan. He, he really leads them in an epic battle to, to take uh, the leadership of the land. 
Um, and then he passes away and his death happens at the very end of the book of Joshua. And so then Judges begins and kind of sets up, uh, this is this new nation just learning how to be a country to themselves. And so that's where Judges begins. And when, when Joshua is about to die, the very last sermon that he gives, he basically tells them, hey, there's two things that y'all need to do because Joshua is Texan, of course. And so he said, first, you need to finish eliminating the enemy from the land. And second, you need to follow God's commands. And God's commands were not unfamiliar to the Israelites. Remember the 10 commandments that had been distributed on Mount Sinai. So they knew what they needed to do. They needed to boot out the enemy and they needed to live according to God's commands. And so Joshua goes ahead and dies and that's where Judges begins. In the very first book, or the very first chapter of Judges, we learn that the Israelites do a terrible job of kicking out the Canaanites. They are supposed to eliminate them, to wipe them off the face of the earth, and they simply do not finish the job. We can look, read this with our modern mindset and think, oh, that's really terrible to kill a bunch of people. And yes, that is terrible. But we need to remember that the Canaanites had been in that land for a long, long time, and they'd had plenty of opportunity to choose God. They knew about him because Abraham had originally come from that territory. So they knew about the one true God, but they had abandoned him and his principles, and they had bowed down before false gods, and their time was up. Their chance was over. And so the Israelites were acting as the strong arm of God, as the arm of judgment on the Canaanites. And so, so that's why he's telling them, you need to get rid of these people because they worship false idols. And God knew that if the Canaanites stayed around, the Israelites would wind up rubbing shoulders, making business deals, marrying each other, and falling down before false gods as well. He's God. He literally knew what they would do if the Canaanites stayed there in that territory. So he tells them to deal with them and then to follow him. So Israel being set up as this new nation, it's designed to be a nation that's ruled by God instead of man. This was really unheard of. All the neighboring nations around Israel were ruled by kings, by a single man. But Israel was meant to be ruled by God alone in something we call a theocracy theocracy. Theo means divine and ocracy means government. And so a theocracy is a government that is ruled by God. And so this was different. This had not been done before. Other uh, nations around them had monarchies or a monocracy. Mono meaning one and ocracy meaning government. One person ran the government. Instead, in Israel, God appointed judges. Now, you and I, when we think of judges, we think of Judge Judy, right? Black robe, white collar, mean. <laughs> Don't cross her, right? Well, this isn't exactly like that. Uh, these judges were more regional and political and military leaders. Uh, they were meant to correct and protect God's people. And so Israel actually did okay with this theocracy for the first generation, meaning the first people that moved into the land and walked with Joshua. Judges 2 7 tells us this. It says, And the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. So basically, as long as the generation survived that remembered what God had done for these people, they did okay following God. But as that generation died out and another generation took and took their place, then they began to struggle. That's what it tells us in Judges 2 8, the very next verse. It says, after that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things that he had done for Israel. So Judges is a book that will document the first 300, 400 years or so of Israel's history as a nation. And it also documents their descent or their downward spiral into idolatry, uh, false god worship, and immorality. It's actually a bloody and disturbing book filled with graphic stories about increasingly godless people um, and, and the habits of these Israelites. Judges chapter 2 actually serves as an overview of the whole book, describing this repeated pattern of sin and bondage and repentance and deliverance and revival that the Israelites would engage in over and over again throughout the book of Judges. So I want to go ahead and read this little overview so you get a better idea of what happens in this book. 
It's found in Judges 2, verses 11 through 19. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord their God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshiping the gods of the people around them, and that angered the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to serve Baal and the images of Ashtoreth. These are basically false gods that were uh, from the countries around them and the people around them. This made the Lord burn with anger against Israel, so he handed them over to raiders who stole their possessions. He turned them over to their enemies all around, and they were no longer able to resist them. Every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them, causing them to be defeated, just as he had warned. The people were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their attackers. Yet Israel did not listen to the judges, but prostituted themselves by worshiping other gods. How quickly they turned from the path of their ancestors, who walked in obedience to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge over Israel, he was with that judge, and they rescued the people from their enemies throughout the judge's lifetime. For the Lord took pity on his people, who were burdened by oppression and suffering. But when the judge died, the people returned to their corrupt ways, behaving worse than those who had lived before them. They went out after other gods, serving them and worshiping them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and their stubborn ways. We call this repeating cycle, this repeating pattern, the cycle of apostasy. So I want to break that down for you real quickly. Do you guys remember the water cycle? You probably learned about it in earth science, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, maybe. So the water cycle, we'll have a, a slide here. Uh, the water is held in clouds, right? Uh, and when the clouds get too heavy, too dense, it rains, right? It falls down on the earth. The rain runs off the ground and gathers in streams and rivers and eventually into lakes and oceans. And then evaporation happens. It, the water is basically sucked out of the lakes and the oceans and it returns up into the clouds, into the air where it becomes clouds again. And this is a cycle. It repeats over and over again. We're drinking water that's been around a really long time because it's gone through this cycle. So we understand what a cycle is. It's a pattern that repeats over and over again. The cycle of apostasy is similar. So the second part of that is apostasy, and we need to define that word. Apostasy means the abandonment or the rejection of belief in God. If you are an apostate, it means that you've abandoned God, you have rejected God. And so when we talk about the Israelites having a cycle of apostasy, it means they had this pattern of rejecting God and rejecting God and rejecting God. So let me describe that exact pattern for you. We talked about it in the scripture, but let me break it down so I'm sure that you understand it. See, the Israelites began in freedom. They came into this nation. God gave them all these blessings and said, hey, if you serve me and you kick out the enemy, things are going to go really well for you. I'm going to bless you. You're going to be fruitful. You're going to multiply. You're going to walk in freedom. You're going to enjoy land and houses and blessings and families and life is going to be good. So they started out in this freedom of walking with God and honoring him and worshiping him only. Remember, though, he asked them to do two things, eliminate the enemy and continue to honor God's instructions. Of course, within a couple generations, they began to fail at both of those things. The enemy lived among them, worshiping false gods and tempting them with their sex-centered religion. And so then the Israelites forgot about God and they forgot about his ways, and they were kind of snookered into uh, these false gods. A lot of it had to do with the fact that uh, these religions were centered around fertility and, uh, and a lack of barrenness. And so really, the Israelites had peer pressure to participate in these fertility god worship possessions because they were afraid if they didn't, that they would be barren. Barren would be bad because it would mean no children. It would mean small and dying flocks and it would mean small and dying crops. And so there was a real fear of that because how would they survive as a nation? The thing is that God had promised them if they would serve him only, they would be fruitful, right? They would be blessed. But as generations passed, they forgot that promise and they started to give into the superstitions of the surrounding people. And so when they did that, when they started to worship these false gods, 
God gave Israel over to its enemies and they experienced judgment. Uh, and, and that judgment is life apart from God because they had rejected God. God allowed his blessings to go with him. And so they experienced uh, oppression. Uh, they experienced for, uh, um, suffering and they experienced uh, bondage underneath these other people groups. And so the Israelites didn't like that. They didn't like it at all. They cried out and they asked God to come to their rescue. They begged God, come back. We're sorry. We want to worship you only. And so they, they repented and God would send a judge to fight for them and to restore that freedom. So you can see this cycle up here on the screen. Uh, it starts out in freedom. We move towards apostasy. Remember, apostasy is to abandon belief in God. Then we move into bondage. The Israelites would be uh, oppressed by other people groups. Then they'd move into humility and repentance. They would feel bad. They'd cry out to God. They'd say they were sorry. And God would send a judge who would deliver these people and they'd move back into freedom. That freedom really happened through worship. When they decided to worship God alone, they experienced that, that freedom. And this cycle happened over and over again. So basically, these Israelites in freedom, they would be good for a generation or two until that idolatry and immorality snuck back into their culture because they never rid the land of its original idol worshipers. And that whole cycle would repeat itself again. And this happened over and over and over again for 300 or more years. The problem, though, beyond that is that with each cycle, the Israelites plummeted deeper and deeper into sin. So if we were to take this cycle, we see it this way, but really it's 3D. And so if we flipped it on its side, it becomes a spiral, not just a circle, but it becomes a spiral. And that spiral took the Israelites further and further away from God. They, they, they lost the purity. They lost the innocence. They lost the enjoyment of God's presence. The judges... These, there were uh, multiple judges. I'm thinking six off the top of my head, but these judges were less and less righteous. And by the end of the book of Judges, the entire nation is immoral and corrupt. And the, the last chapter erupts in a bloody civil war, and, and the book of Judges ends on a stark sentence. It says, in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. So basically, the Israelites refused God's leadership, and they attempted to lead themselves, and it went very, very poorly. I think this is still true for us today. When we refuse, when we reject God's leadership, it usually goes very poorly for us. For us. I wonder, as we talk about this cycle of apostasy, if you can see it within your own life. I can remember being about your age uh, and learning for the first time about this cycle of apostasy. See, I grew up in church, and I knew about God. My parents were Christians, and I went to Sunday school, and I um, participated in youth group and all of those things. And I did want to serve God. That was my heart. Um, but I also enjoyed sin, and I struggled with that. I would sin, and I would sin for a long time and experience bad consequences, until finally, those consequences made me really sad about my sin. And then I would repent. I would tell God, I'm sorry. And he would come to my rescue and he would restore me. And we would enjoy freedom together for a while until I'd sin again. And this cycle was repeated in my life. I wonder if you can relate. That you participate in things that that you know separate you from God and you let those things go on in your life until you get to a point where you're in so much pain and you're so uncomfortable that you finally confess. You tell God, I'm not going to do it again. And you enjoy that, that lift, that freedom for a while until temptation comes and drags you right back to the place you were before, only this time worse, deeper, scarier. Uh, you have less control over what's happening. So I wonder if you've experienced that in your own life. And secondly, I wonder if you can see that in the life cycle of our nation, of the United States, that we are deep in apostasy. We've been rejecting God for a long time. Our, 
our laws, our legislation, our, our, the way we run our schools and our society, we've rejected God. And at what point are we going to get uncomfortable enough with the consequences of sin that we'll get on our knees and we'll cry out for God to intervene, we'll repent and invite him back into our situation? The trouble with the cycle of apostasy is that if we don't learn from our mistakes, it becomes that vicious downward spiral. The, the screen I showed you with that spiral just going further and further down. And that's exactly what happened with the Israelites. And it's what our natural tendency is with sin. The thing is, though, that this cycle can be redeemed. See, we can choose to cycle down or cycle up. We can flip the spiral. And so how do we do that? We do this when we recognize our sins early and we repent often. We don't let sin drag us all the way down the road. We recognize right away, whoa, I've sinned. I don't want to break my relationship with God. So we repent right there when we realize that rather than going a good long ways into sin and letting a lot of painful things pile up in our life, we can cycle up instead of cycling down um, when when we see our failures as opportunities to grow instead of setbacks. So how do we do that with sin? Well, when we've sinned and we recognize it and we did, then we need to go back and re-examine what went wrong. Where was I when I felt tempted? What was going on in my life when I felt tempted? How was I feeling? Like, was I depressed? Was I tired? Was I hungry? Was I lonely? Was I sad? Was I angry? What were the conditions that surrounded that sin scenario? And when we can do that, then we recognize those as red flags down the road. And we can learn from those setbacks rather than just repeating them over and over again. We can also let this repentance piece happening often in our lives. We can let that push us closer to God. See, repentance says, hey, there's something that's come between me and God, and I don't like it, and so I want to remove it. And the sooner we can recognize that, the sooner we can deal with it, and the closer we can move to God. You guys, really mature Christians aren't sinless. They just repent often. They go to God daily and say, yesterday I did this and this and this, and I felt really yucky about it, and I'm sorry, please help me. And that's how they walk in growing intimacy with God because they keep really short records, and it's totally doable. You can do that if you are 15, or you can do that if you are 55. The shorter these records are, the tighter our spiral grows, and the closer to God. We can stop being discouraged by this cycle and we start being encouraged and seeing it as a pathway for growth rather than a pathway of destruction like it was for the Israelites. This same cycle can serve to move us closer to God instead of further away from him. The Israelites waited until things got really bad before they called on God. It feels like our nation has done that as well. But as individuals, you and I have a choice. We can recognize our sin early and often. We can call on God for forgiveness while it's still small and the consequences are manageable. The shorter we make these cycles, the stronger and closer to God will grow. Israel struggled to figure it out. And by the next book, 1 Samuel, they're going to beg God to let them have a human king. You think having a human king will be easier to serve than having a God king. The problem with the human king, though, is that they're human. It means they're flawed. And so it's not going to be the solution that they're looking for. Israel ultimately rejected God's best plan for his people, and they chose their own way. It didn't go well for them. I wonder about us. God's pl best plan is that we'll do all that we can to avoid sin. And when we fail, that we come right back to him. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, please help us when we fail. We're going to fail. We're humans. And failure's just built in <laughs> at this point. We need your help. Please help us to recognize it. Help us to confess it quickly. Use this cycle. Redeem it as a spiral that moves us closer and closer to you. Help us to recognize those mistakes 
and choose to grow towards you through them. May we have the guts to kick the enemy out of our land and follow your word. Amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to do something. Just sit tight there. Um, let's go a little more interactive here. <laughs> Try not to get uh, too... But uh, Corinne, are you still there? Um, you could shout out there or give a, a wave or something. I'm going to wave at you. Something popped up when you, uh, it, it said that you were watching. And so I wanted to see what we could do because this is, we're trying to be a little more interactive. So if you could just uh, quick acknowledge me, but I guess I can try to do what it's saying. It says, um, bring them on camera. And so I wondered if, oh, it says can't bring you on camera. Oh. Brother Al, would you be willing to get <laughs> brought on camera? Okay, I just want to see how we can do this and see if this is a feature that we could add um, maybe in the future. It's a little behind on mine anyway. Okay. It says adding. Brother Al. So I don't know. He was watching a little bit ago. That's good. I know Mason was watching, but it didn't give me a chance. And some others, uh, it didn't say bring them on camera. So mm -hmm. uh, Amethyst is, are you still here? I'll try to bring you on camera and see just what that does. It says can't bring Amethyst on camera. Mm -hmm. um, what a cool feature if it works though. Yeah. Yep. So, okay, well, um, I guess there's one more thing. I was thinking um, we didn't talk about just uh, showing back there. Or, no. So we're going to go ahead and close out in prayer, I think. Uh, thank you all for watching. I uh, hope that, that the message was um, insightful. Um, a lot of times, I know as teenagers, we, we can look at, parts of the books of the Bible and, and just be like, I don't know what that's about and just skip over it, you know? Um, and we, we like to go to the New Testament, a lot of love, it's Jesus, and <laughs> yes, we, we need all that too. But um, the whole point of this whole series is to tie tie in really Jesus, you know? And right. so by the time that we get to Jesus in the New Testament and in the Gospels, we'll have all this history kind of fresh in our minds of saying, hey, this makes sense now. So like she mentioned the king coming you know that uh the king will be established in israel you know and that that will fail you know because A human king jesus will do yeah it. <laughs> because jesus is the king of kings yeah. and stuff. so so judges we're, we're learning more about what that is and uh the cycle of apostasy and and like you said you know even in our own you know uh age of grace you know where we're reliant on jesus sacrifice and, and god's grace in our lives and we can come to him at a moment's notice we still fall away and, and, and shy away and put up a wall between us and God because of our sin and we feel shame and we want to stay away. Um, and, and we cause that cycle in our own lives. And it doesn't have to be that way because that's why Jesus came is to end that cycle that it could be just a, a quick trip back to the top of right relationship with God yeah. when, we, when we do that. Yeah. Well, um, just piggybacking off that when, um, Gosh, it's probably been 10 years ago. I was tripping over a same sin kind of over and over, and I got so discouraged about it because this same sin just caught me over and over. And I was talking to the Lord about it and just like, I'm so sad. And he's like, no, you're looking at it like you're going this way. And he's like, no, I'm refining you. You're going this way, you know, and you keep coming back to it because it's getting smaller because we're moving further and further from that sin. And, and it's, it's neat to me now, 10 years later, to, to know that that sin really isn't an issue for me anymore because I did eventually grow out of it by confessing it and, and dealing with it as, as, as often as it came up, which was often for me. I mean, it wasn't something horrible. I had like frustration uh, with my kids and anger and you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, it's just neat to see how that growth happens. And so I just really wanted this to be encouraging to our students that um, just because you sin doesn't mean that you uh, can't overcome that. that God, right. uh, obviously, Jesus and his Holy Spirit is a huge piece in strengthening us to overcome it too. So. Yeah. So we hope that you'll join us next week for mm -hmm. our last water night over there at the church. 
Uh, of course, uh, Big Church on Sunday uh, is going to be great. We've got a guest speaker. Actually, he's carrying over from the men's conference from Saturday. He's going to mm -hmm. be speaking Sunday. So it's going to be a great Sunday. And, um, and next Wednesday as well. And then... Who knows what we're going to do? You be never doing. know what we're going to yeah. do next. So, yeah. And, pay attention there. And we'll be looking at doing Sack Lunch after church, too, once the temperature comes down. You know, 100 degrees is fair to miserable and miserable. So we're, yeah. we're avoiding that. So, yeah. awesome. All right. So let's pray. God, thank you again for tonight. Thank you for just these great points that Pastor Anna brought up. And uh, just thank you for the, the time that we have all made to be here together, Lord. I pray that uh, you just help us through this week, God. I, I thank you that uh, uh, historically this is Wednesday night is a church night and a youth group night. Uh, it's it's hump day, <laughs> uh, commonly called, because it's halfway through the week. And I'm glad that, that we still have that here. Mm -hmm. And that uh, whether kids are tuning in now or late at night or even on Friday, I just pray that it would be an encouragement to them and that they would just remember uh, the youth group is here mm -hmm. and that uh, we all love each other and we're here for each other. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I pray that we would just lift each other up in prayer as we think about and remember each other throughout the week. And just go with us as we go. Um, just help us with all the things we've got going on, uh, finishing out the summer and, and all the fun stuff uh, with that, uh, the video game levels that we want to conquer, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the growth that we want to have happen as well uh, in you. Lord, thank you that you made a way that we don't have to stay in that cycle, that we can get jumped up and cycle up and, uh, and level up with you. So we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, you guys. God bless.